Tech Ministries here with another study on Noah, with the emphasis on the first tribulation period, and how it is a sample for the upcoming tribulation period. Jesus called this period, the days of Noah, but once you search it out, you will come to see that it was a tribulation period, that engulfed the whole world, and was almost as bad as the coming tribulation period, and having a lot of the same players. This study will point these things out. Let's get started. Now, some history of how this tribulation period came to be. Jared was the father of Enoch, and it was in his generation that the Watchers, the fallen angels, came down from heaven, and mated with women and had children by them. For the sake of ease, let's say they came down from heaven, on the very day Jared was born, and began their mischief. Jared lived until 962 years, and died 234 years before the flood came. Therefore, these angels and their children wreaked havoc on the earth for roughly 1,200 years. So the start of what would become the tribulation to them, was during the days of Jared. Now, their tribulation started easy enough. The angels had relations with the women of their choice, and they gave hybrid children to them, a thing that was not created or sanctioned by God. And meanwhile, as the children began to grow, the fallen angels increased the knowledge of man with the secrets of heaven. And they taught them how to make weapons of warfare, and the art of using them. Swords, shields, armor, and helmets, all things formerly unknown to men, but now revealed, to cause to them their own destruction. They also taught them astrology, how to allow the stars to have governance over them. This was their initiation upon man, to begin the worship of the heavenly bodies, which going forward did bring the wrath of God upon them. Nothing these angels did was for the good of man, and all of the knowledge they received from them was for their own destruction. And just as it was in their day, where knowledge was increased, so it is in our day that knowledge is increasing in the right hands, for the good of the people, but in the wrong hands, for the destruction of the people. The increased knowledge, during the coming tribulation, will aid the Antichrist with technology, that will enslave the people to his will. So, increased knowledge is a factor in both tribulation periods, and ultimately will lead to the destruction, of the people. Now, I want to bring to your attention, that in both tribulation periods, it was mainly dominated with evil, by fallen angels. As I have stated, during the days of Noah, they showed up in the generation of Jared. In our day, they will show up in the generation that sees the rebirth of the nation of Israel. Scripture says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. If you continue on with the verses, it will speak of the dragon chasing the woman, a remnant of Israel, into the wilderness, showing this to be an end-time prophecy. Hear how Jesus compares the days of Noah, that past tribulation, with the upcoming tribulation, to come upon the earth. Scripture says, That as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When Jesus said, They were eating, and drinking, and marrying, and given in marriage, he was not speaking of simply eating, drinking, and marrying, as the normal routine of daily life. No, he was speaking of the acts of the Nephilim, the grown children from the mixture of angels, copulating with women. 
In the book of Enoch it says, that the Nephilim grew so large, that they consumed all the food in the land, to sustain themselves, and when that was gone, they began to eat men alive. This is what Jesus meant when he said, and they were eating. Jesus further said, and they were drinking. Again, in the book of Enoch it says, they were drinking the blood of men also, and this is what he meant when he said, and they were drinking. He said, they were marrying and given in marriage. Meaning, the angels were marrying the daughters of men, and having children by them, all transgressions brought about by angels, that left their first estate. So the humans of the earth, were being slaughtered by the giant Nephilim, and they were helpless to contain them. There were wars also at that time, and man was on the losing end. This was their tribulation, and if it were not for Noah and the ark, there would have been no men left. Jesus said, the upcoming tribulation, will be as these days, prior to his return. Think about it. During that tribulation, the whole earth was affected by these fallen angels and their Nephilim offspring. Both believers and unbelievers were being devastated by them. The whole of mankind had to fend for themselves to escape being a victim of the supernatural Nephilim, against the natural man. None were rescued by God, from the tribulation, except those believers who endured to the end. Then those who were alive and remained, God rescued from his wrath of the flood, in the form of the ark. Now, if this is the pattern we should expect for the upcoming tribulation period, then this puts the pre-tribulation rapture in question, for only those believers who were alive and remained at the end of the tribulation, were rescued at the end from his wrath of the flood by the ark. Likewise, in this upcoming tribulation, those believers who are alive and remained at the end of the tribulation, will be rescued at the end from his wrath by way of the rapture. The illustration of the first tribulation, Noah's tribulation, says without words, that God does not deliver you from tribulation, but will in every case, deliver you from his wrath. Now, I want to bring something to your attention, which God said to Noah immediately after he and the animals exited the ark. He said, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Flesh with the life thereof, is speaking about a living thing, flesh that has life in it. Which is the blood thereof, is speaking about a living thing, that has blood coursing through its veins. Shall ye not eat means, this is not a food source for you. In other words, God was saying, you cannot eat humans alive, and drink their blood, as the evil giants did, who were also wiped out by the flood. For in this new beginning, this kind of atrocity, shall not be named among you. Now, this what I am about to say, is a little off topic, but I need to insert it here. Have you noticed, that a lot of the things in the law that God gave to the nation of Israel, are a correction of the things, learned by men, from the fallen angels. The very first law, thou shalt have no other gods before me, is correcting the learning of the worship of the heavenly bodies, taught to us by the fallen angels. What about this law? Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind, it is abomination. Again, this was taught to man by the fallen angels, as they were sowing their seed among all living things. Now, let's get back to Noah and the ark. Okay, I want you to take note, of who was in the ark with Noah. It was man and animals. God saved both man and animals from his wrath, not just man, but man and animals. The ark represents a place of safety, a place of protection, a place of provision. It was shelter from the storm, the storm caused by the hand of God. Do you see what I am getting at? God will not bring a full end to his creatures, he will preserve a remnant for himself, both of men, and of animals, he will save to himself. 
If this is an example for us, then what does this say about the rapture? First, let's identify who the rapture is actually for, and the purpose of the rapture. The rapture is for all believers who are alive and remain until the second coming of Jesus. In other words they make it through the tribulation, and are alive at its end. And since they are alive at its end, now they must experience the wrath of God which Jesus will pour out upon the earth when he comes. But Jesus took the wrath of God upon himself for us, in order that we do not experience the wrath of God ourselves. Which leads us to the purpose of the rapture. The purpose of the rapture, is to rescue all believers from the wrath that will come from God, as a result of his appearance, as we are not appointed to his wrath. We will be rescued from his wrath, and hidden in a secret place until his wrath is over. Now in the case of Noah, only eight believers, in the entire world was left alive, and remained, before the wrath of God, the flood, was poured out upon the earth. So, God hid them in the ark, and only after they were safely in, did he pour out his wrath upon the earth. Therefore, the ark was their place of safety from the wrath of God. Now in the case of the rapture, there will be believers left alive, before the fury of God is poured out upon the earth. So, God will lift them out of the earth and into the air, while his fury is being poured out. And there we will remain until the end of his fury. Therefore, the air will be the ark of our safety, from the wrath of God. Scripture says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You say, well, why would we be taken just to the air, and not into heaven? It is because Jesus is leaving heaven to reign on the earth for one thousand years, and we are to reign with him during that time. Therefore, he will lift us out of the earth for a moment, into the clouds of the air, and pour out his wrath upon the earth, and then afterwards, he will retrieve us from the air, and we will be forever with the Lord. Do you remember, who God saved from his wrath, in the day of Noah? It was men and animals, and when he restored them to the earth, it was also men and animals that came out. Therefore, I believe that the unspoken truth about the rapture is that alongside of men, there will be animals raptured too. And he shall hide them in the air along with us, and once the calamity is over, we will all return together to the earth, with the people as well as animals, to furnish his kingdom on the earth. This is so cool. Scripture says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Imagine that. We will put on incorruption, and likewise, so will the animals that are taken with us, put on incorruption, and they will be everlasting, as we too will be everlasting. We have some glorious times ahead of us, and God is so willing to spoil us. Can't wait to get there. If you want to be a part of the kingdom of God with family and friends and even animals, tell God, I know I am a sinner in need of a savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, you have some glorious times ahead of you, and you are now become a citizen of his kingdom. Glory hallelujah. Thanks for watching. Noah's tribulation, is a sample of what we can expect in the upcoming tribulation, and the function of the ark, is how we can expect the rapture to operate. If this study has helped you, 
please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. May God richly bless you.